then I am going to be yeah. So cold. Today I am going to be talking to you. I don't like saying that. Why do I say that? Ugh. Hey guys, new video today. Uh, uh. Hey guys, new video, a little bit different from before. We are going to be doing a shop tour. So I'm not making anything in this video, but I did kind of make this, which is my shop. So in 2020, I did a lot of renovations to the garage. I did a lot of uh, improvements. I made a lot of fixtures and holders and movable carts. And I wanted to show you guys what I've done in 2020. I think that was good, maybe. But before I can show you the shop, I need to show you guys where I started. So back in 2019, I did a quick little walkthrough of the, it's not quick. Back in 2019, I did a walkthrough of the shop and showed you all the things that I disliked about the shop, what I wanted to improve, and I thought it was really interesting to look back and to see what things I actually ended up moving forward with and what things I still haven't done. And I'll talk about that a little bit further in the video. So here it is, the one car garage that I've been working out of. Most of the stuff that you guys have seen is kind of been on this table or I'll actually just work right here on the floor or outside there. But uh, workspace is, there's not that many surfaces to work off of and that's gonna be an improvement. I have this MFT table that works great for power tools and cross cutting with the, um, the fold down track but uh the other surface i have here is this workmate and it was really great when i was using it but now it's kind of been relegated to being a drill press stand so one of the things to improve this winter is actually making a drill press stand so i could free that up to use for as another surface as another clamping device hopefully making it uh using it to make my uh, traditional woodworking bench uh here we have mainly where all my tools are stored um i don't know if you guys are interested in the drawers but this is a lot of the stuff that i grab first this is all my measuring devices uh s chisels woodworking stuff wrenches uh router bits this is uh, basically routers and planes and spoke shaves. In here is just pretty much all the power tools and big things that I keep up here. On the top is uh, random uh, secondary tools I don't really ever use, uh, but I still need them for other projects. Uh, consumables, tapes, glues, ropes, string, more consumables, glue, uh, knife sharpening. Uh, and here is just a big uh, miscellaneous drawer of manuals, uh, eye protection, hearing protection for guests, and then this is the charging station for all my batteries and gear for the power tools. And above us is a loft that came with the original owner of the house. Um, we've only been here for a year, and so this loft, I haven't decided if I was gonna keep it, rebuild it, um, but I've just been using it to clamp uh, my clamps to as well as holding um, my uh, hearing protection, respirator stuff, uh, random stuff. A lot of that stuff needs to go in the attic. And anything you see on the walls was originally from the previous owner, and I've just been just using it to hang uh, lights off of, my saws, uh, random stuff here and there. Um, here's my, my lighting situation. So that's another thing that I'm gonna improve. Uh, come uh, the renovation, because the only light in here is from the uh, garage light and this uh, thing that I got off of Instagram, it kind of turns your regular socket bulb into like a three panel LED, I don't wanna blind you guys, so. And then the other light is this portable Ryobi light that I have that shines right on the surface. It's actually pretty great, but uh, it does drain pretty fast. So you usually get about three hours for those lights on high, but you can get a little bit longer. Uh, so here is my table saw. Uh, it's pretty much always stored in that position, but I haven't decided if I'm going to get rid of the stand and just keep it 
kind of built into a modern workbench table saw table. Uh, that way it's just always ready to use. I don't have to move things around and I might kind of integrate it with the MFT table and all the drawers and stuff like here. Uh, here we have some wood storage uh, and some foam. Uh, this is this area kind of gets a really crazy when there's a project going on and I have more wood. Everything here is kind of just scraps and things that um, uh, I might eventually use uh, for other projects. But generally, because it's such a small garage, I don't really think I could store a lot of lumber. I have like kind of a, a barn in the back, like a small uh, tool shed, I guess. Uh, that we've been just starting to put a lot of the wood and stuff into just to free up space. Um, these shelves were originally from the previous owner. Uh, we're gonna tear all that down and kind of make a, a better lumber storage system or a, you know, uh, kind of cabinet tree maybe. Um, and this is the other side. This is where I've been storing a lot of my glues, random spray paints, nails, uh, all that stuff. Eventually this is gonna go into a cabinet that's up here. Um, but so this is the issues that I've been having really badly with the uh, house. When I moved in here, this column is here and there's another one on this side here. Uh, you can't see it's back there, but um, we weren't sure exactly what it is, but it really intrudes in on the space here. It comes out about a foot from the wall and it's really difficult to get like a, a workbench or a shelf all the way across with it there. Um, if anybody knows what that is, uh, please let me know. But uh, in the end, I'm gonna tear, this down, tear it down. I actually uh, drilled a hole in here and put a camera in to look around what's inside and it's all hollow. So I think originally it was for a boat that they were storing in here or something. And I don't know what's happening right here. They kind of patched it up with a piece of lumber. Uh, I think the, the cement in the back must be really exposed because whenever it rains really heavily, uh, water actually kind of leaks in down here and kind of floods the, the floor a little bit. It's not bad, but it's just, it definitely creates a uh, wet nest that I don't want. So this winter, I'm gonna be knocking this one down and knocking the other side down and then uh, getting rid of this and then patching up all the concrete. Uh, removing all of this stuff up here and might be painting the walls. Um, it's also, this wall is extremely uneven. Um, you can't tell really, but it kind of just comes out right here and then goes back in. This is our fireplace uh, that's on the other side of this wall. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna paint that, uh, but someone decided to spray paint all over the front of it. That's why it's all yellow and green. And then you got this thing here. Um, that's why I thought maybe I'm painting it. So uh, beyond that, I'm gonna get an electrician to come in to wire uh, electricity in here, a uh, couple of outlets, some 220, maybe I'll be doing some welding in the future, or maybe um, we're gonna have an electric car or something and I want um, electric charging out of the front. But that's uh, things I have to think about. It's better to do it now if I'm gonna get the electrician in. And also we're gonna do some uh, lighting up top. So that's the current plan. Um, it's a lot to do and hopefully I could get this done by the end of winter, but most likely it's gonna lead into the summer. Uh, so stick around and we'll see how much I document of this. Maybe I won't use this. Maybe it'll just be interesting for me to keep, but uh, maybe I'll share it. And if I do, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks guys, bye. Hey, I'm back. So one of the biggest improvements to the shop that I thought improved my quality of life was repainting the garage. Uh, it was such a simple thing of just changing everything to a white, uh, getting the ceiling and the walls painted, uh, made it less noisy and brightened up the shop and made me happier. So really easy fix. Uh, I used a spray gun uh, and just sprayed the whole thing. Took maybe like half a day. And the other thing was I got better lights in. So that's something I definitely wanted to do. I got an electrician to come in and they upgraded my house electricity from 100 to 200 amps. And I got uh, lights put in, additional outlets that I could actually use now. So I didn't have to just share one outlet. Big improvement. Another big improvement to the shop were these two floors. I got this tip from Weber Workshop. 
uh, he had these installed in his garage and they're excellent. So before it was that concrete floor and it was kind of uneven and it had weird paint here and there. And I didn't really want to flatten the garage out and put epoxy or something on it. So I got these tiles, they snap together and they actually even out the floor slightly. Uh, if there's any bumps, it could, it could ride over them. And it adds a layer of insulation. So if like it's a cold concrete floor, I really don't feel that when I'm standing on it. And they have chemical resistance and they're really easy to clean and mop up. Really recommended for the shop and it looks great. So one of the very first things that I built in the shop was this workbench. This is a plywood design of Paul Sellers workbench that he has come up with. He has awesome videos. If you don't know who he is, check him out. He is a hand tool woodworker, but he designed this bench specifically for people with power tools to make it a little bit quicker. So these are laminated plywood and everything was done with plywood. So it was, I think three sheets of plywood for the legs, the table, the tool well, uh, even where the vice is. And this is a Yost vice that I got. I really like it. And I spent a lot of time on this bench just doodling, making stuff. Um, it's super rock steady uh, and the surface is flat and that's really what you want for any kind of glue ups and planing and stuff like that. Spent a lot of time, check out my Instagram. I think I spent like four hours planing this stuff down but it is totally worth it. I love it. Uh, it's an awesome bench. You guys should check out the design. So a lot of my time last year was making uh, the French cleat wall here. This is one of the three walls that I'll show you, but this is the main wall where I keep a lot of my hand tools. Um, so like I would come in here every day and I would spend a day making just one holder and then going back to work. Uh, so I had a lot of fun coming up with really cool ways of making holders. Uh, they all kind of have their own unique personality. Uh, if you want to see them more in detail, you can check out my Instagram. Um, I'll, I'll show you, I have posts on how I made it, uh, videos on how they work. Uh, but I'll show you one real quick one. My favorite one is this saw holder that basically you can just take it out and if you want to put it back, you kind of just slip it in and there's a dowel that kind of holds it on. Really cool concept. And a lot of these are 3D printed too. So parts of it are, this. Uh, the bottom part here is 3D printed, this cup holder is 3D printed. Uh, the hooks that are holding some of these onto the French cleat are 3D printed. Uh, and the files are all available on Thingiverse. Uh, you guys should check it out. So I ended up keeping the shelf up here, but I painted everything up top. It's just such valuable storage to kind of hold all the big stuff that I have that don't really have a spot and I don't really use it that often. So I have a ladder, a big router table that I just never use, uh, some storage boxes and toolboxes for me to go out somewhere, my paint sprayer. It's just a, a good spot and I shouldn't get rid of it. And I didn't really need to rebuild it. Just need to repaint it and give it a nice uh, coat of paint to make it look nicer. I still using um, this to kind of hold my clamps. It's not ideal, but it, it's a good spot and it's out of the way and it's not gonna take up too much wall space. So I haven't figured out anything better, but if you got ideas, let me know. So this is still kind of the same. My toolbox and stuff is here and a lot of the stuff that was in there is now on the wall. So I have a little bit more storage in there that I've been keeping new tools and things I don't use that often, but it's protected inside there. Uh, so sort of sensitive stuff. A lot of consumables are still in there, but nothing's really changed there. Uh, I think that's a great spot. Um, and then uh, a Dyson, because that's what I clean my shop with. And fire extinguisher in case anything ever goes on fire. Very important. So back over here, I made this closet for you guys. I'll show you. So uh, there used to be a nook there. I don't remember if I showed it to you in the last video, but I did this built-in closet, a little Darth Vader pull that I really love. Uh, it's really messy in there, but uh, a lot of my storage for um, finishes, extra screws and stuff like that. Really love that build. Uh, I have some paint up here, spray paint that I could do further layers of, uh, as I get more collection, I'm gonna put my, my spray paint up there. And um, this wall wasn't being used at the moment. So now it's just kind of like personal effects and books and glue and some knickknacks. Um, this was a shelf that I got a long time ago in my old apartment. I have no place for it in the house, but now it's here. And this is where I keep kind of like my cell phone and camera gear when I'm working and stuff like that. So this side of the garage is kind of what I think of as the power tool side of the garage. Uh, I kind of divided up this 
uh, the, the, the garage into two sides, the traditional hand tool, woodworking side, and then the power tool side. So this French cleat wall runs all the way across, and I haven't filled it up yet, but eventually I'm sure I will. Uh, but a lot of these holders is kind of what I was doing uh, this last year or two, was kind of getting all the tools that were in the bottom drawer, up on the wall, so that I had quick access to them. Uh, and that's, the, that's, the, that's why the Festool uh, sander is up. Um, Festool makes awesome sustainers for people who travel and use the boxes. But if I'm home all the time where I do the majority of my work, I don't really need the boxes to travel. Uh, I, I don't want to kind of reach into the box, open it, take everything out. It's just quicker if I could just grab it and just use it for a couple of seconds. So a lot of my tools are just kind of reachable. So sander is there. The track saw is, has its own home. I can just put everything down, make my cross cut, get to work. And, and that's it. But uh, some of these holders are kind of just like the hand tool wall. They're a little, they're more simple, but um, some of them have 3D printed uh, parts to it, like the holders for these. I made some custom ones for like the glue gun. And there's some nice funky details too um, that I really like about them. And it's just been working out really well for me. Um, I made like holders for this um, automatic uh, vacuum starter for the table saw. This uh, pivoting boom arm that is all printed in place. Uh, you can check all that out on Instagram. So one of my favorite builds for 2020 was getting this saw stop job site off of its old stand and onto a mobile cart. And the reason is I have way more mobility with it now because it's on casters. So before I kind of had to like block it out and it was really difficult, but now I kind of just slide it and I could extend the table if I wanted to. And if I want it kind of out of the way, um, I can kind of do it this way and make cross cuts this way. Um, so it kind of gets a little bit closer to the wall. Um, but it's also I can move it outside a lot easier too. And also has storage for me to keep my extra saws and just miscellaneous things for the table saw. But most importantly, there's a dust catch here that key, uh, catches anything that falls down. So I've been cutting some plastic and some shavings, but the dust collection actually works pretty well in this. This is about like three weeks worth of dust that has fallen through, but I just didn't want it falling on the stuff below. So I made it an opening on that. So one of the mobile carts I made in 2020 was this drill press stand. Um, it was just a quick design that I used. Um, in here is the drawer that holds a lot of the drill uh, bits and things that I need for it. And then here are uh, sustainer drawers where I keep um, uh, my shaper um, bits and uh, wrenches and stuff for the table that is right here. Um, so I made the holder for that. And then this holds the actual uh, shaper origin itself. So this is kind of where I keep the storage for that. But I can move this uh, drill press around where I want it to, and I uh, kind of like it. I designed these uh, track holders that go on your garage door. You could get, uh, these are based off of the fast cap ones, but I 3D printed these. You could get these on Thingiverse if you have a 3D printer, or you could just buy the fast cap ones. Great product, but you get uh, all your track saws, Makitas, Festools, whatever on your garage door. You can hang them vertically or horizontally. Uh, these are a great way to get protect your tracks and get them uh, off the floor so they don't tip over or take up space. Uh, I have this one for my long track and this one's for my short track when it's not on the MFT, but a uh, great huge improvement to the shop. So this is the last bit of the garage I'm showing you. This is where uh, I store my motorcycle because I still share the garage with it and lumber. Uh, the biggest improvement was getting this lumber rack installed so I could store all my long uh, pieces as well as the foam that I use to cut uh, anything really big with the track saw. And any sheets of plywood are against the wall and it'll fit a full sheet uh, from the wall to the window. And I added this French cleat wall because it's kind of like this awkward space I didn't really know what to do with. Uh, but now I can kind of use that space eventually to hang tools or equipment and stuff like that. And I made these cool uh, helmet holders uh, as part of the year's project, because uh, I still need them and I kind of like it right next to the bike.
Hey guys, thanks for checking out the walkthrough of the shop. And some of you guys might have noticed I don't have a jointer or I don't have a thickness planer or a big dust collection system. And the reason is because I think those take up a lot of room and I don't do a lot of rough lumber. And if you do a lot of that stuff, you might have to get that in your shop. But a lot of my woodworking is modern furniture and a lot of that is plywood, three quarters, and a lot of standard dimensions that you could get at the shop already kind of thickness plane to that um, thickness. And even if I did do a little bit of rough lumber, I have hand tools. Um, and I think hand tools don't take up a lot of space, but they can do a lot with rough lumber. It just takes a little more effort, yeah. Uh, you need to learn to sharpen your blades, but it's also a skill that I like. It's relaxing and Watch some Paul Seller videos because he'll definitely influence you to get into hand tool working because he makes it so relaxing and fun. And I just love watching his videos and he's influenced me a lot to do this. But I also have um, power tools that I have that I that help with that work and task and cutting things. Um, so it's kind of this hybrid that I mentioned earlier. But if you are in an apartment and you don't have a single car garage uh, that I'm lucky to have, then you guys can maybe dedicate a, a closet or a small little chest to hand tools because you can make a lot of great uh, projects. And I wish I knew what I knew now when I lived in an apartment because I would have gotten into woodworking a lot sooner. And I hope that this video helps uh, anybody with a single car garage uh, with ideas on how to build out your shop and uh, some improvements that you guys might have not known that you could do. But I think one of my biggest takeaways is to get things on casters and move them around and get things up off the floor and on the wall. And that's why I love French cleats because I can move them around and they're great options uh, for a small garage. And in the future, I think I might do more cabinets up on top on the power tool wall. Um, I might make uh, some stuff, um, some more mobile carts. And I think I kind of want a bandsaw so I might have to free up some space around or move some things and shelves, but it's all flexible and I can move things around. Uh, so that's maybe the future for me, uh, but this is my shop in 2020 and I really appreciate you guys uh, for watching the video. And uh, if you liked what you saw, uh, hit that like button and subscribe to me in 2021. I would love to get to a thousand followers, that's my goal. And check out my other videos. If you haven't seen them, uh, they're different from this, but I make a lot of woodworking projects with 3D printed uh, plastics and designs. And uh, I hope you like the videos and thanks again, guys, bye. Hey, so no, one of the big, <laughs> so stupid. Um, so yeah, that's garage. It's a terrible ending.